everyone now in this session we will be discussing about mineralization so what is mineralization adding up of minerals to make the structure hard so basic minerals are calcium and phosphate calcium hydroxyphotite what you have been discussing in your chapter of enamel in length and breadth we have discussed so that mineralization how it happens what are the theories associated with it we will be discussing in this chapter so mineralization is a process of deposition of minerals in an organic matrix so, so already an organic matrix is laid down and then the minerals will come and then hardening takes place and this is mineralization here it is capable of accepting more and more minerals process of deposition of the minerals in organic matrix and accepting more and more minerals also and this is an important step in the formation of hard tissues of the body so mineralization will take place in your enamel cementum all those areas wherever hard structures are there bone your mineralization takes place so basically mineralization means minerals so the most common or the most important minerals the component for hard tissue formation are calcium hydroxyphotite crystals so which is made up of calcium and phosphate so this calcium hydroxyphotite is the basic component here the mineral component of all hard tissues of the body are chiefly calcium hydroxyphotite and this is the formula for this sometimes in your viva exams they may tell to write this formula also of calcium hydroxyphotite so ca10 pa46 oh2 so this is your calcium hydroxyphotite so this biological apatite crystal has the shape of a stubby rhombic prism in which varies in size so it's like a prism rhombic prism which varies in size so that is measured in angstrom units now this mineralization when it happens so there are two types of nucleation happening here one is homogeneous nucleation and the second one is your heterogeneous nucleation so first one homogeneous nucleation so if there is local increase in the concentration of minerals so calcium phosphate the minerals are coming and if there is local increase in the concentration of minerals this will allow the formation of sufficient iron crystals required for mineralization so such process that leads to mineralization is called homogeneous nucleation so there is a local increase in the concentration of minerals and because of which more and more sufficient iron crystals will get attracted and that is called as homogeneous like same type increase in concentration happen and it invited other minerals also to come so that is your homogeneous nucleation the next one is your heterogeneous mineralization so heterogeneous hetero means different types so the, here some nucleating substances will be there different different nucleating substances will be there and this nucleating substance will act like a template on which it will act it will gather all the information and mineralization takes place so they will act as a template for crystal formation and therefore they decrease the energy requirement for mineralization so they will act like a template on which mineralization will take place so this is the heterogeneous mineralization now coming to the theories of mineralization so we have got three theories of mineralization which are very important which comes in the exams also in viva also they ask the first one is called booster theory of robinson robinson is the person who gave this booster mechanism theory or booster theory or you can even call it as alkaline phosphatase theory and this alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme so this enzyme plays a very important role because of which the mineralization is accelerated so this alkaline phosphatase theory it was put forward in 1923 by a person named robinson he proposed that there is an enzyme called alkaline phosphatase which is present in many places it is present in organic matrix of calcifying matrix like bone enamel cementum wherever the organic matrix is there and it is bound to in future it is bound for calcifying there this enzyme will be there alkaline phosphatase so they are present and what they will do alkaline phosphatase can hydrolyze organic phosphates in the organic matrix organic phosphates are there they can hydrolyze organic phosphates such as pyrophosphates or glucose 16 phosphate 
and they are present in plasma or calcifying tissue fluid and release inorganic orthophosphate. So, they will hydrolyze, alkaline phosphatase will hydrolyze and then it will liberate inorganic orthophosphate. As a result, more phosphate came now. So, it is like a boost. It has boosted the effect of phosphate, which results in local increase in the phosphate ion concentration. So, this alkaline phosphatase enzyme, which is present in the organic matrix, what they will do? They will hydrolyze phosphates and pyrophosphates and in turn create more of phosphate ions, inorganic orthophosphates. So, as a result, it is boosting up. So, that is why it is called as booster theory of alkaline phosphatase theory, the other names. So, there is a local increase in the ionic component. So, it has a boosting effect which would increase the proportion of the phosphate ions sufficient to cause spontaneous precipitation. So, now it will take a new direction and new speed and it will start because of more of phosphate ions. The phosphate ion combines with the calcium ions available in the tissue fluid to create hydroxypatite crystals. So, more of phosphate ion comes, automatically it will catch the calcium ions and the mineralization proceeds even further. So, this Robinson theory, he said that he came to a conclusion that this alkaline phosphatase that it is present in the rachitic bone. The rachitic bone what is there? From there you have more of alkaline phosphatase enzyme and it is capable of splitting organic phosphate to release inorganic phosphate. So, that is a boost, boosting theory here. Whatever organic phosphate is there, this enzyme will come, it will break it and it will make it inorganic phosphate and then mineralization will take place. So, this phosphate combines with the calcium to produce apatite crystals, hydroxapatite crystals. The so phosphate came, it will attract the calcium, mix both of them, your calcium hydroxapatite comes. So, he observed that the calcifying cartilage, the cartilage which are calcifying also contains more of alkaline phosphatase than non-calcifying cartilages. So, he studied on various bones, various cartilages and came to a conclusion that calcifying cartilage are more prone, more, they have more concentration of alkaline phosphatase. But this theory has lot of drawbacks also. So, it has been severely criticized also. But the role of alkaline phosphatase cannot be ruled out. So, alkaline phosphatase is a group of enzymes which you study in biochemistry, alkaline phosphatase that can cleave the phosphate ions from organic to inorganic at an alkaline pH. So, the possible role of alkaline phosphatase in mineralization. So, we got an alkaline phosphatase enzyme, it will convert the organic phosphate to inorganic phosphate. Now, what? What is the role of alkaline phosphatase in mineralization? It has got two roles. The first role, it is to provide inorganic phosphate ions required for mineralization because calcium and phosphate, inorganic phosphates are required. Who will give this? Alkaline phosphatase will convert organic to inorganic phosphatase. That is one supply. Second, it will aid in ion transport. Alkaline phosphatase enzyme will aid in ion transport and they may help in removing crystal poison. So, all the hindrances and all, it will remove it so that the mineralization proceeds in a very fast forward direction. So, these are the possible roles of alkaline phosphatase. So, this is the first theory of mineralization, booster mechanism theory you call it. Now, coming to the second theory that is called collagen seeding theory or nucleating theory or collagen template theory. So, here the collagen will act like a template and there are some nucleating agents which will make sure that the mineralization is happening. So, some nucleating substances which have spatial arrangements has that of hydroxapatite, they look like hydroxapatite, can act as a mold or a template on which the crystals can be laid down. So, this nucleating substance can initiate mineralization even when the ionic concentration is less. Even when the ionic concentration is less, because these nucleating agents are there, they can initiate the mineralization process and they reduce the energy for mineralization, the startup energy, the initiation energy is also reduced here. So, collagen plays a very important role here, it acts like a seed. So, collagen is the most important seed playing a significant role in mineralization and certain amino acids also come into the action and they make sure that the mineralization is happening. So, calcium and phosphate ion present in the extracellular fluid binds to the sites 
to form hydroxyapatite crystals which grow further by addition of more and more of ions and all and then your amino acids lysine hydroxyl lysines also actively participate here and the role of collagen in mineralization is purely evident and that is the one of the most important nucleating agent but this theory again has some drawback it is unable to explain the mineralization in all the tissues so for example enamel is highly mineralized tissue but does not contain collagen so this is the collagen theory you say that if collagen is there then only mineralization is happening but whereas in enamel there is no collagen formation then how does mineralization takes place there so that is some of the drawbacks this theory does not answer it and mineralization of cartilage begins in the ground substances and not in association with the collagen so it is in the ground substance it happens not in the collagen these two other drawbacks the points which rule out in favor of this theory so collagen is one nucleating agent and some other nucleating agents are also there that is lipids and protein polysaccharides lipids and protein polysaccharides also have a power to initiate the mineralization so it will act like a template on which the mineralization will act so this is your second theory now coming to the third theory which is called as matrix vesicle theory so first theory is robinson alkaline phosphatase theory the second theory is your collagen theory and the third one is your matrix vesicle theory so matrix vesicle these are small small vesicles they are membranous bound vesicles isolated in areas of calcification so calcification is happening in some areas here and there they are present this structures bud off from the synthetic cells so this matrix vesicle they will break off from the synthetic cells and they will scatter around and they are released into the organic matrix it has been observed that this matrix vesicles induce precipitation of hydroxyapatite crystals in vitro so they can precipitate the formation of hydroxyapatite crystals in vitro and then form solutions containing calcium phosphate ions and they are capable of crystal formation also even when the solubility of the product is very low so the above factors what we have just discussed even in the vitros also calcium phosphate soluble solution they can precipitate this they suggest that so that matrix vesicles have a capacity to initiate mineralization so this is all about your matrix vesicle theory in brief so mineralization it takes place because of calcium and phosphate and the hydroxyapatite crystals are the major template what is there on which the whole structure is based on so mineralization will take place in the first organic matrix is there and then only hardening takes place so there are three theories to favor the mineralization matrix vesicle theory collagen seeding theory and alkaline phosphatase that is robinson theory so that's all in this chapter thank you